is abound in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. If you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. There is a bar in Gilead to Thank you. I'm done. Thank you very much, Agi. We will now like to welcome our speaker, uh, Hilda Bob. You're very much welcome. Come and speak with us. Okay. Thank you so very much. Um, that was beautiful singing, Agi. I think God has blessed you with an awesome voice, and God wants us to use our gifts and our talents in His service. As a matter of fact. Um, music is able to transform the airways, reconfigure the air, and bring healing. Um, one of the things that I love about music is that, do you know, if you have a stroke and you cannot speak, you can still sing. Yes. If you have a stroke and you lose your ability to speak, you can still sing. Isn't God awesome? I say yes, yes. Uh, I just want to, yes, I'm going to share my screen at this time. Um, yeah, so it's really good to be here again. And we want to talk this evening. The last time we look at, looked at um, the causes of disease and so on this evening or this morning, whatever time it is where you are, uh, we just want to say that God is awesome and he wants us to thrive and not just survive. God is not just about the ordinary. He is about the extraordinary. And if we were made in the image of God, then we were made to thrive, to experience what we call dynamic vitality. But for most people in our world today, that is not happening. And one of the things that we mentioned on Sunday is that our education has to do a lot with how we believe. Because what is taught in the classroom is actually believed by people. When we um, apply that to a spiritual setting, we see what is taught in the classroom is preached on the pulpit and believed in the pew. Let me say that again. What is taught in the classroom is preached on the pulpit and believed in the pew. So if the enemy wants to, to really get us, then he has to get into our education system, which he has done very successfully and the fact that we are not the designers of curriculum would mean that our acceptance of information and the way we perceive that information and apply it is not necessarily determined by the one who designed us. So this evening, we want to look at some simple things that people really should know. And my first slide is on what we call approaches because the way 
we look at things is going to determine the intervention that we make. They, we have, we, we have in, in our world today, there are systems that are designed to teach us how to speak, how to raise our children, how to manage our finances, and even how to take care of this body. But we know that our health, my health is my responsibility. And it is for me to understand what God, the designer of this body has in store for me. So let's pray and then we go ahead. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful privilege of sharing. We love you and we want to come in union with your precepts. So continue to teach us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, um, I must say how, how happy I feel. I feel like family, actually, as we go through these sessions. Uh, they, we, we, we have a wonderful opportunity now to have the light of medical missionary work of the health work and of the gospel being presented to the world because the world actually is open to it, is dying for it. And we have an opportunity, but we must be able to reach them because the world loves science. And we must be able to use science to meet the world. The world has problems. We live in a time of what we call most. We have the most resources. We have the most people with higher education. And yet we have the most problems and for me, I usually say something is kind of wrong with that. If we're having the most of everything, then we're supposed to have the most solutions. We're supposed to be, we're not supposed to be building more hospital beds. We are supposed to be having people using their resources and their abilities in other areas to develop the dignity of humanity. God has placed us to be able to do that as his people. And so usually in, in what we call the healing art or health, whether it be allopathy or it be um, naturopathy, many people are using certain approaches and they, we have what we call the historical approach. Most people, it doesn't matter when, they're using different approaches. They use what we call the historical approach. What is the historical approach? The historical approach involves what we call naming a symptom and prescribing a treatment. So if you have headache, you have a headache, you want to use what we call Panadol, right? You want to get rid of the headache. This is not what we really want to do, get rid of the headache because the headache is speaking something to me. It is speaking something to you, a headache a rash, a lump, a bump, a fever is actually saying something to you and I. It is saying something is wrong that need to be fixed. Something is wrong. So now we must try to work back what is wrong. So whether you are in a, a medical doctor prescribing medication or even sometimes people into natural medicine, they are actually doing the same thing. But the approach that we want to use is how is the body out of balance and treating the person to bring the person back in balance. That is called the systematic approach or the systemic approach because we want to know, actually study what wellness is. What is wellness? So then we can actually decide on how the person is out of health. And that is what we call the approach that we want to use because in using that approach, you don't necessarily have to know the name of a disease, but you are actually looking at how the person is out of balance, what we call out of homeostasis. So now what do the, the body is composed of cells and cells make up tissues and tissues make up organs and organs make up what we call system. Now, so the health of the body is determined by the health of the cell. If the cells are not healthy, then the body can't be healthy. Um, that is why simply reducing the symptom, which is the expression, the body's trying to say something is wrong. Because we know that famous definition in the book, Ministry of Healing 127. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system of conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. Now, if that is true, then nature is trying to expel 
get rid of impurities, get rid of toxins to bring back balance. But because she doesn't have enough vital force, we experience symptoms because we are bombarded by all manner of pathogens day to day. And in the normal scheme of things, the body is able to handle these things. But sometimes because of being overwhelmed, we have sickness or symptoms coming to being. What does the cell need to be healthy? Of course, the cells need oxygen. And I have here oxygen to activate the cell. Outside of oxygen, the cell is going to experience death. Oxygen is critical to life. God designed it that way. As a matter of fact, air and the Holy Spirit are synonymous. It is the spirit that imparts life. So air is, is, is an expression, a, a almost tangible, for want of a better expression, of the work of the Holy Spirit. The spirit in our nostrils, the book of Job tells us, the spirit in our nostrils is able to give life. If we take away the spirit or the breath or the air, then death occurs, death ensues. So we need oxygen to activate the cell. And that's one of the first things, or for oxygen to activate the cells. Outside of oxygen, there is death. Then there is, we need nutrients to build the tissue. So if the cells and the tissues don't get oxygen and nutrients, they need magnesium and calcium, iron and zinc and silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, uh, selenium, many minerals. You have um, um, major uh, minerals and you have minor ones. Yeah, you have those uh, trace elements that you need. And so we, the body needs these to be able to function well. It needs vitamins and minerals. It needs amino acids, essential fatty acids, oxygen to activate the cells, and nutrients to build the tissue. And of course, because the cells and the tissues are going to be doing work. What is that work? For us to walk and talk and see and think. All these require work. You need a system to remove the waste. There must be what we call waste removal. And of course, temperature regulation. Temperature regulation because for homeostasis, it must be at a particular temperature. Um, our body has a, a general body temperature, you know, just a little over 37 degrees. Now, if the temperature goes too low or too high, then these processes are affected. The inner working of the cell, they are affected. Now, you may wonder why are we talking about these things? Because these are simple things that people should know. If the cell needs oxygen, then we must put ourselves in the position that the cell must get the oxygen it needs. So we need to breathe good, clean air. If the cell needs nutrients, then we must ensure that we get the best quality nutrients. And if the cell needs to remove waste from its activity, what we call metabolism, then it's important that the system for waste removal is functioning effectively. And then for temperature regulation, we must treat the body so it can manage temperature. That's why we learned that we must dress a certain way. We must have a certain kind of temperature in our homes and so on. These things are important. Now, this is important for what we call homeostasis to exist, what we call balance. The body must be balanced. If it is unbalanced in any direction, then disease or disease occurs. All of our body systems and what we call our measurements, we mentioned that in the last lecture, are what we call windows through which life exists. Your blood pressure, your blood sugar, your cholesterol, your um, bun, your, your creatinine, all these are what we call windows and they can be measured. But for them to remain in the window, the inner working of the cell must be right. We must have adequate oxygen, adequate nutrients, removal of waste and temperature management. So the cell exists in what we call a fluid medium. And that fluid medium is, is similar to seawater in terms of its composition. We call that the biological terrain. So the cells exist. Your blood is, is similar to seawater. Yes, it is. That is why you can't drink seawater just like that because of the similar constitution and concentration. It would not go well with the body. Um, so in that salty fluid, the blood, the, the blood is in blood vessels. And in, remember, the blood is made up of different cells and so on. 
And the blood, blood vessels are what we call, has what we call semi-permeable membrane. It allows certain things to go in and go out. Now, when the bloodstream osmotic pressure is maintained by what we call plasma protein, these are important because we are going to come to an expression why people get sick and why we make certain kinds of interventions and why certain interventions are not the best for ultimate health, what we call dynamic vitality of the body. So in the bloodstream, osmotic pressure, that is for, for, for stuff to move in and out of the membrane, that is what we call maintained by what we call plasma proteins. God designed it that way. And these plasma proteins are, are as follows, albumin, globulin, and fibrinogen. Now they have different functions in the body. Now, many people may have come across a lot of these before. Let's look at the last one, fibrinogen is important in the formation of clots along with blood platelets. So fibrinogen is one of the plasma protein that assists in regulating osmotic pressure inside that marvelous system. Then you have globulins, and you may have heard of globulins before, and those are important in your immune response. But the most important one is, um, in this situation we're talking about here, is albumin. Albumin is important in maintaining osmotic pressure. Very important in maintaining osmotic pressure. In other words, the, uh, the, that, that pressure that determines how stuff move in and out of the blood vessels. That is critical. Now, under um, pressure, some of the fluid from the bloodstream, um, it, it, it leaves the bloodstream and bathes the surrounding tissues. So remember, you have the heart that is pumping the blood and it's under pressure. There are these, um, these pumps in your arteries and so on. And, and as they pump the blood, some of the blood is able to escape because it's, it's a semi-permeable membrane. And God designed it so that the, the fluid is actually, and it has nutrients and oxygen in that fluid, bear the surrounding fluid, and that fluid is called lymph. Right? Lymph is important because as part of the body's defense system, you'll see how lymph is going to become very important. So lymph is that fluid medium that the cells live in. In that medium, you have oxygen, you have nutrients, you have waste removal, and you have that maintenance of temperature which we call homeostasis. When that system is, is, is functioning well, we experience what we call health, a state of well-being, wellness. Wellness is what we experience. This fluid is constantly being replenished and waste removed. So because the cart is continually pumping, you are replenishing the fluid um, in there. The blood, the oxygen is taken up by the cell, nutrients is, extra, is, is, is taken up, they are used, waste is removed, and they and, and that system is flowing like, like clockwork many thousand times a day. You see why we need to take good things in the body? Because if we don't, then this system is going to be affected. Now there's pressure in the bloodstream, but no pressure inside the cell. So remember the heart is pumping the blood in the blood, in the blood vessels, but in the cell, there is what we call, the cells exist in what we call negative pressure, which is a pressure lower than atmospheric pressure. We wouldn't go into a lot of the um, dynamics of that. This is not for this lecture. But just know that, that there is no pressure inside of the cell, but there is pressure outside of the cell in the blood vessels. The reason that the stuff is able to leak out of the blood vessels to get into the, um, the surrounding tissue is because of that situation there. Now, um, so now when you have the albumin and the other plasma proteins being pushed out of the blood vessels into the surrounding fluid we call lymph, there is no pressure to push them back in to maintain what we call osmotic pressure. Why is that important? So think of it as if you fill a balloon with water or several balloons with water and you put them in a bucket, there will be some little spaces between the balloons that are filled with water. And you can actually fill those little spaces with some water. But if you fill it with just enough water, just to fill the spaces, that is how the system kind of is like. So in that, the fluid between the spaces is what you call the lymph fluid there now, right? Good. So when pressure pushes 
the, 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 uh, the, the, the plasma proteins out of the cell, there is no pressure to push them back in. So the lymphatic system now is going to take up the excess fluid and the albumin and through a system of smaller into larger lymphatic vessels, it's going to eventually end up in the subclavian vein in the neck and um, get back into the circulatory system. So that cycle is going to continue. When that cycle is affected, that's how things like edema and other situations occur. When this very thing we're explaining here is interrupted or affected by some, some mechanism. All right, so we move on. So the lymphatic system is a passive system, meaning it has no pumps. Unlike arteries and stuff, there are no pumps. You have what we call one-way valves. And so to move fluid in the lymphatic system, to prevent it from what we call pooling, movement is important. Hence the reason God make us to walk. Have you noticed that in our legs, where we have knees, the other animals have elbows. Their legs are turned in the other direction. God designed us to move, to walk. So when we're talking here about why we exercise, one of the reasons for exercise is not simply to raise the heart or to drive nutrients in the cell, hence um, limiting the amount of insulin that is needed. One of the reasons for walking or movement is to move lymph. For if lymph is not moving, there is stagnation in the, in, in the system. Waste will not be removed. Nutrients and oxygen cannot be um, circulated. And so we have sickness and death. We have sickness and death. So let's go that over again. Movement is important for the lymph to move through the system because remember, the lymphatic system pervades the entire body. There are three systems that really pervade the entire body, but lymph is the most pervasive one. You have the nervous system, you have the circulatory system, and you have the lymphatic system. But there are some places that have no nerves. And there are some places where the blood vessels don't go. The lens of the eye don't have blood vessels, but they are bathed with lymph. That's how it gets its nutrients and its oxygen. All right, and how waste is removed. A lot of folks, because we, we use a lot of um, technology today, our eyes are exposed to a lot of radiation. And so we have a lot of oxidative stress. It is the lymphatic system that is going to remove that because if it's not adequately removed and we don't take care of that system, that's some of the reasons why cataract is going to develop and glaucoma and other eye diseases, all right? Breathing is one of the really important ways of removing lymph because we have many lymph nodes passing through our chest. Yes, um, so the system passes through there. So when we move, when we breathe, these things are important. That is why it's important to practice your breathing, to breathe well, to breathe deeply. So when we are going to tell people about wellness, it's not sufficient to simply prescribe a plant for this or that. Those affect symptoms. As a matter of fact, when plants are used just to relieve symptoms, it means that we are using the same system as the ones who are using drugs. Remember, plants have a more broad and far-reaching impact, not simply because of the nutrient content in terms of minerals and, and so, but we have a lot of what we call phytonutrients, other chemicals, um, saponins, uh, terpenes, sesquiterpenes, um, alkaloids. These, these phytochemicals have a tremendous impact on the body's systems. And they are the real um, agents that give the body the tools necessary for it to fight what we call oxidative stress, a term that we are going to come to in a little while. So lymph nodes filter the lymph um, and the lymph now system, the, in, in those um, lymph nodes, you have a lot of white blood cells and they are part of what we call the adaptive immune system. And their main function is to get rid of cellular debris. Remember we said work produces waste and waste must be removed. So as the, the cell uses nutrients, as the cell uses oxygen, um, the cell is going to do its work efficiently. The cell is going to produce waste. For health of the cell to continue, that waste must be removed. So there must be a cycling, a actual movement all the time. So we see why we must have movement. If there is no movement, 
there is stagnation, then there is death, both in the physical and in the spiritual as well. Now, sometimes because the system is not working well or for some reason, uh, many reasons there may be, you have damage to the system which results in inflammation. And many people have varying ideas of what inflammation is. For some, um, in, in where I live, when you see that, you know, you get an injury and you see that yellow stuff coming out there, people call that inflammation. But that is not necessarily inflammation. That's just the result and actually the end of inflammation. Um, inflammation has particular characteristics which we want to look at. Inflammation is not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, when you get a cut, that process of forming a clot to heal it is an inflammatory response. Yes. That is the body's way of healing. God designed it. If you cut a tree, you'll have that same response. And the mechanism for that to happen was put in place by God when he made um, his creation. All things being equal, the inflammatory process is to assist the body. Inflammation is not a bad thing. It is, it is the body's initial response to what we call tissue damage or infection. If there is damage, the body will try to, to keep it localized and to bring healing. But we will see how an interruption in that process can cause disease or if it is not supported with the necessary nutrients, oxygen, um, the necessary waste removal and temperature control. Now, inflammation sequesters a damaged area. In other words, it wants to coordinate all. Think of it like um, you have a crime scene. In a crime scene, the police is going to come um, and that's why we talk about the white blood cells and so on. And they are going to what? Mark off that area and say, um, caution. And that caution means that we are going to process this, get the facts so we can remedy the situation, all right? Inflammation is the protective mechanism of the body. Inflammation is made to protect the body from what? From further damage and death because God created us to live. God is the giver of life. He's not the author of death. Inflammation causes heat, redness, swelling, and pain. Those are the classic symptoms, how we know that we have inflammation. Heat, redness, swelling, and pain, and we look into the mechanism of that. So how does that happen? You see, within the contents of the cell, if they, let us say, remember that situation we spoke about with the balloon representing the cell filled with water, that's the cell's contents, and then we pour water into the spaces with the balloons, and we call that the lymphatic fluid, if we were to take a knife and puncture the, 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 the cell or the balloon, then the contents of the cell will flow out into the lymphatic fluid. Now, that is not good. What we need, the contents of the cell should be in the cell, maintaining its integrity, and it should happen only in a way that the body could be able to, to deal with, which is slowly, the body wants to be able to, um, to determine how and how many things actually go out and in of the cell, all right? So it's important that we, we, we monitor that process. All right, now, within the contents of the cell are chemical messengers that trigger an inflammatory cascade, right? So now, that cascade, um, two of those chemical messengers are histamine and bradykinin. And um, of course, we know about histamine because a lot of people uh, taking antihistamine, um, and with bradykinin is important in colds and mucus drainage. Now, they create what we call dilation of capillary pores and allow large amounts of fluid and protein to flood the area, creating pressure between the cells because what they actually want to do is to contain that. You don't want all that damage to occur and all the fluid to be, to be coming out and uh, extending to other parts of the body. So the body has a mechanism of kind of cordoning off uh, uh, damage and trying to heal the area as quickly as possible. When this happens, um, it slows down oxygen to the cell. Remember the cell needs oxygen. Histamine and bradykinin activity slows down oxygen to the cell. They slow waste removal white blood cell move to the site to try to clean up. There is heat, swelling, redness, and pain. So we understand now how that situation happens. 
Um, the heat is caused by increased cellular activity and oxidation at the site of damage. So as the cell in activity increases, the amount of heat is going to increase. So the area is going to feel warm. The swelling is caused by dilation of capillary pores to allow fluid and protein into the tissue space, um, increasing in increasing quantities, allowing the white blood cells in the area. Remember the white blood cells, they are there to, to, to clean up the situation. You want to deal with any infection. So this is happening outside of our control by design of God when there is damage. So the swelling, um, the, you're going to have swelling because now the capillaries are opening up, allowing more fluid to, and protein, remember those plasma proteins we talk about, albumin and globulin and fibrinogen, they are going to be flowing into the spaces. So the more of them in the spaces now, the area is going to swell. But also it's, those are going to be bringing the white blood cells that are needed to the area. The redness is caused by increased blood flow to the area. Definitely, when there is an injury, what will happen? The body is designed to fix it. So it's going to send more blood. Why? With more blood is going to come more oxygen, more nutrients in an attempt to have more waste, waste removal and so on. So the body now is attempting on all fronts to heal the injury and bring back balance or homeostasis. So the redness is caused by increased blood flow to the area by, um, you know, the blood vessels are dilated above the affected area and constricted below the, the, the affected area. Why is it constricted below the affected area? Of course, below, you also have the tissue below that cannot be deprived. All right. So above, it's going to open, bringing more blood because it wants to bring the healing and below it's going to be constricted. Pain. Ah, yeah. Pain is due to the tissue swelling, putting pressure on the nerves and a lack of oxygen to the tissue. So if you go back to the previous slide, we see now where we get the heat, swelling, redness, and pain. Now, if you have arthritis, then you would know of all these combined together. If you were to bounce your toe, you will see this. But um, even more than that, this process of inflammation is involved in all chronic and degenerative disease. As a matter of fact, as we would see in a little while, um, inflammation, is critical in the initial stage of developing chronic illness. And that's why we're looking at it. So folks could understand why we drink water, why we exercise, why we must have good nutrition. Because some people just think it's, well, I want to be healthy. How does it work? And in understanding how it works, when we are administering natural remedies, we are going to select the best thing to bring these principles into working order the way God wants it to be. So pain, and when you have pain, you always want a help. So inflammation or oxidative stress, they are kind of similar in a certain sense. Um, at another time, maybe we could go through um, what the oxidative stress but is. But if, if, if you have done chemistry, you will know a bit about oxidation. And um, in an oxidative sense, it's something that has an unpaired electron in the outer shell. And it's very unstable because they are looking for balance too. And one of the things that um, oxidative, um, in oxidative stress, you have a lot of what we call free radicals. They are what we call electron stealers looking for balance. They create damage because they can steal electrons from other areas that may have weak bonds or, or they may um, pair up with electrons that, that, that may create um, damaging um, particles and stuff to the body. So it's important that oxidative stress be kept to a minimum because oxidative stress is one of the stimulus for the inflammatory process. So um, oxidative stress, inflammation is one of the root causes of all chronic and degenerative disease. Remember, we explained the inflammatory process and how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to work to keep the body well. Um, if that process was not initiated, death will result much faster. That is why when you experience, if you experience massive trauma, a car accident, a massive fall, that is going to occur because the inflammatory process cannot work fast enough to bring back balance. Now there are times when you have to go to the hospital to get treatment for inflammation. 
if you have an accident, a gunshot, somebody were to chop you or so on, you get a bad infection, then there are systems there. You need to be stitched up. The blood, needs, blood flow needs to be stopped and so on because you need to assist the body in bringing back balance. Heart disease, aging, cancer, allergies, autoimmune disorders. And we're talking here about things like diabetes, high blood pressure, kidney disease, all these things have their root. As a matter of fact, it is said that inflammation can be thought of as the mother of all diseases since inflammation, the inflammatory process is usually the initial response to all tissue damage. The reason we have this, these diseases, which are the result, is because of some inflammatory process that is damaging the tissue. The tissue or the cell may not be getting that which it needs. So addressing the inflammation could prevent further tissue damage and arrest many situations. That is why most of the plants that are used in bringing health back, giving the body the tools it needs, have anti-inflammatory properties. Let's look at probably um, one or two examples. So um, I remember uh, some years ago, my mom called me, she said, I took a um, cold medication and she experienced an allergic reaction to it. It was about eight o'clock at night and we have no pharmacy open. She's now itching and starting to have um, this rash. She doesn't know what to do. I said, Lord, what to do? And then the Holy Spirit brought to my mind, the only thing we had was chamomile. Chamomile has anti-inflammatory properties. There are two components in chamomile. There are more, um, azulene and bisabolol. These have powerful anti-inflammatory properties. Those are phytonutrients in, in chamomile that are very powerful anti-inflammatory. They actually calm the fire of inflammation. When, when you use chamomile, the fire of inflammation, that swelling and redness and pain is actually facilitates the calming of that process. So we drank, I gave her some chamomile tea to drink and in 10 minutes, she was better. That's how the infl um, inflammatory process works. But let's say in chronic disease or degenerative disease, let us say a person were to have stomach cancer. It didn't begin as stomach cancer. There may have been some irritation in the stomach. Yeah, and the person may have been having some acid reflux for some time. The person may not be eating well. Their stress level is high and stress contributes to inflammation and oxidative stress. Yes, it does. Um, that person didn't take it on. They felt a little you know, pinch in the, in, in, in the stomach area. Um, go to bed late, doesn't drink enough water, eats any time. And so they would have affected some of the metabolic processes because you see the stomach needs hydrochloric acid to break down protein. It is the chief cells in the stomach that is able to liberate the hydrochloric acid. But the chief cells need calcium in order to give up the hydrochloric acid. Now, most people are deficient in calcium and they do not know. Calcium is one of the most important minerals that human beings need. As a matter of fact, science tells us that nutrients jump on the back of calcium literally to get into the cell. Without calcium, the cells do not get adequate amounts of nutrients, but they also need glucose to open the door. So you see if the pancreas isn't working well, the cell cannot get the energy it needs. It cannot get the mechanism to open the doors on the cell. And if you have a deficiency in calcium, then the nutrients have no mechanism to get inside the cell. You're not breathing well um, and so on. You're not getting enough oxygen, enough clean, pure air. The cell will be deficient. The next thing is that the person may develop an ulcer. So just from the acid reflux, you, you have um, damage to the wall, that mucosa, and eventually you can develop an ulcer and that ulcer can become cancerous. Now, what is the problem, the cancer? No, it's that inflammatory process that was not kept in check. 
by furnishing the body with the things that it needs so that it can do the work that it, that the work that it is supposed to do. So when we look at autoimmune disease, it's critical to understand those inflammatory process. Let me just give another example. So we have, um, you hear about cholesterol and cholesterol is given a really bad name, but cholesterol is not bad, cholesterol is good. There is no bad cholesterol. All cholesterol is good. And you may say, why are you saying that when most of the world is talking about HDL, high density lipoprotein as good and LDL as low density lipoprotein as bad? Well, if the body is making something and God designed the body, the body to maintain health and dynamic vitality, then what the body makes is good. As a matter of fact, if you did not have LDL, how would you transport a lot of your nutrients to the brain? Oxygen is transported through LDL to the brain. 75% of your white matter is cholesterol. The myelin sheet on your nerves is cholesterol. All your sex hormones are made from cholesterol. So cholesterol is good. From cholesterol is where you get pregnenolone. From pregnenolone is where you get progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, and all your adrenal hormones. So um, cholesterol is good because God designed the body to make it. What then is the problem with cholesterol? Cholesterol gets a bad name because of uh, we are putting our bodies under undue duress, stimulating the inflammatory process. The laying down of LDL is an inflammatory response. Let's explain how that is so. The doctors, the scientists will tell you, you'd never find the laying down of those plaque in the veins. They are always in the arteries and where the artery bends or make a beach is where you find the laying down. Why does that happen? Well, again, because of our poor choices in nutrition, our high stress life, lack of rest, we put all sorts of things in the body, breaking all the laws of health. We find a situation where the heart has to work harder to be able to get oxygen and nutrients. And in that hard work, sometimes the blood vessels split to, to, to maintain the integrity of the blood vessels so that we don't bleed out inside. God made the body to make cholesterol. LDL by its density actually occurs closer to the edge of the blood vessel, whereas HDL more to the center. So that LDL is what you call a repairer molecule. It is leaving the liver where it is produced to go to a site of injury or damage where there's an inflammatory process in place so that it can bring healing. So it's going to try to put a plaster on the sore. That is what the plaque starts out, of, starts out as in the inflammatory process. It is trying to bring healing. But we did not change our lifestyle we did not change our eating or rest pattern. We did not change our nutrition. So more and more of that cholesterol is going to have to be laid down to plaster up the potential leaks or weaknesses in the blood vessels. Now, if you lay down more and more plaster, would the, the space between get narrower and narrower? The answer is yes. If the space is getting narrow, constricted or hardened, would not the pump have to work harder and harder? Yes. So now, how do we get rid of it? Of course, if your cholesterol, which is your LDL is high, it means that there is a lot of oxidative stress and a lot of repair is needed. If your HDL is high, then it means that the damage has been repaired and the body is now moving out the garbage from the repair to the liver to be broken down and excreted by the body. What we do now in, in our intervention is to assist the body in doing that. So all those markers are what we call windows and indicators of the inflammatory process so that the body can do have the healing that is supposed to happen in it. So inflammation is not a bad thing. Um, our skin is wrinkling because of the oxidative stress. Those cells are starting to 
wear and break down because they're not getting enough oxygen, they're not getting enough nutrients, the waste is not being removed because simply of the world in which we live, there is a lot of contamination. They are unavoidable. We can delay, we can suppress, but we can't always eliminate. There are some things we can eliminate, but there are some things that we can't eliminate. Um, and that's why we can only reduce their, their impact upon us by the choices that we make. Do we have a lot of folks with allergies today? The answer is yes. Why do we have people with all these allergies? Well, to a certain extent, especially people of African descent, I don't know what's happening and where you are, but where I live in the, in the Caribbean, a lot of our children are having um, allergies, especially because we are using a lot of wheat. And the wheat that we use is what we call a hybridized wheat. Hybridized mean it was genetically modified. In the 1950s, wheat would have been modified to meet what we call the food crisis. Um, they would have genetically modified the wheat. And what that does is that it would affect, it would affect the, the nutrients in the product. The nutrients are going to, to change in terms of how they behave. And sometimes the body does not have enough vital force in terms of its enzymes and stuff to break them down. So for example, in wheat, um, hybridized wheat, you have um, carbohydrates, you have proteins and you have fiber, yes, and that's good. But in wheat, the, the protein is usually collectively um, called gluten. And a lot of people are gluten sensitive. Why? Because the wheat has been hybridized. In original wheat, like Emma and Incorn and, and, and Spelt and so on, it is not hybridized, so we handle the gluten better. Those are some of the reasons. Now, the carbohydrate ex is, exists in the form of what we call amylopectin. Amylopectin has different um, forms. You have amylopectin A, amylopectin B, amylopectin C. Amylopectin B, you find in fruits and, and so on. Amylopectin C, you find in like beans and these kinds of things. Amylopectin A is the hybridized carbohydrate that sometimes our enzymes are not designed to break them down. So what that means is that some of the nutrients are not broken down into their smallest components. They sometimes exist as long chains and they damage what we call the brush border in the place of absorption, the large intestine and small intestine. They actually cause a damage in the, the villi. And sometimes they punch holes and punching those holes means the inflammatory process is initiated. And as the body try to fix those, sometimes they escape into the bloodstream and they, those uh, molecules look as parts of our body. The immune response, the inflammatory response is initiated. And if they look like some parts of our joints, then the body is going to not just attack them, but attack our joints as well. So these are some of the impact of the inflammatory process. That is why God wants us to understand these things. So we are actually going to have um, the best type of in intervention. What did God design us to do? Number one, if we look at the New Start program, which stands for nutrition, we need good nutrition. Fruits, nuts, seeds, grains are packed with lots of fiber, high in protein, high in essential fatty acids, high in fats. The body needs those especially. All foods have proteins and carbohydrates and all the things, the stuff that God made. We need variety because some foods are higher in some things than some. Then we need our vegetables, especially the dark green leafy ones to build good blood. That's why we use um, our greens. That's why we use our kale and, and, and our cauliflower and our bok choy and our collard greens. These have important components to give the body the tools it needs for healing. Sometimes the inflammatory process is so overwhelming that you have a full blown disease and you want to one, get rid of the excess inflammation. Now, herbs like basil, and peppermint, those aromatics, garlic and onion 
are very powerful. They have very powerful components to assist the inflammatory process to occur and remove the waste so that the body can heal. Do you know that a simple mixture of seven leaves of basil, seven leaves of peppermint in a liter of water, boil, and you drink throughout the day is very powerful in stopping most cancers from progressing. It's not going to heal it, the cancer, but it will stop it from progressing because that is powerfully anti-inflammatory, anti-mucogenic. One of the things about cancer is that you have a lot of mucus being produced. That is the body's attempt to, to, to keep the thing down. So it's important when we, we look at it. So when we look at that intervention, what is it doing in the body? And that's why we, we spoke about the systeming or uh, the systematic approach, which is how do we bring the body back into balance, preventing inflammation or the inflammatory process from getting out of hand? If you didn't have that inflammatory process, you wouldn't have the formation of clots and scar and healing. It's the same thing inside the body. The inflammatory process of heart disease, of high blood pressure, of diabetes, or any chronic or degenerative disease can be reversed by understanding these processes. And what we are going to do now is to study the plants that God has designed to assist the body in this inflammatory response, which is an attempt by the body to regain homeostasis, to regain health, to regain balance. This is what God wants us to know. So it's not simply to say, I have circulation problem, let's take cayenne. Why do I have a circulation problem? Am I cutting off my blood supply and thus initiating that inflammatory process where my heart has to work harder? Am I, am I, am I, ha am I having stress? Am I giving the body the nutrients that it needs? These are the things we must ask ourselves the question. So it's not sufficient to just give the cayenne. Yes, we can get temporary relief. If I want to condition my, my um, digestive system, ginger, a powerful adaptogenic herb. Women, you may have your hot flushes Black cohosh, very, very important as to, to, to inhibit that inflammatory process and bring, bring the body back into balance. Um, ashwagandha, very important herb. Uh, you know, many people have thyroid issues, myrrh, selenium as, an, as a mineral. These things are the things that people need to, to understand when it comes to, to, to the inflammatory process and how we intervene to bring back healing. And so as time go by, the desire is to help people to understand more why, because we're going out in a world and the world is educated. We never know who we interact with, but the world is sick. Why is the world sick? Because it misunderstands a principle found in the word of God. In the book of Romans chapter one and verse 20, it says, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, it is in the scientific world that we see the hand and work of the Lord. But science is not rightly understood by people who are not walking with God. They have the possibility, the potential to understand, but they do not always understand because they are not walking with God. It is people like you and I who are supposed to know God, who is supposed to rightly understand science. Christ Object Lessons tells us we can only truly understand science as we spend time in the word of God. So there's a famous quote in the book, Comes on Health, page 506, that says, as religious intolerance suppress the liberties of our nation, those who stand for freedom of conscience would be brought into difficult places. They should while they have opportunity, become intelligent as to disease, its cause, prevention, and cure. And with this, they will find a field of work anyway, because there are lots of sick people among us. Even many who are practicing the healing art, some of them are not well, because they are not obeying the laws of health. 
We need to come back to that time when we understand that God wants to save us. And even in our disobedience, even in our ignorance, he has created the inflammatory process to extend our lives because we are not originally designed to die. With all the abuse that we go through in our system, we still find that we are alive today. And many people wonder, how is it the human species can undergo and experience such abuse and still come out resilient? It's because of the inflammatory process that God has put, built into the design of all of us as human beings. Are there other factors? Yes, there are genetic factors. Yes, there are epigenetic factors. And these things are important. And that's why God's servant would say in Psalm 139, he says, my substance was not hid when I was made in secret and curiously formed in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. In other words, that's talking about the DNA. If we want to have healthy cells, we must have good DNA because it is the DNA that gives the instruction. That is why we said you need oxygen. Without good oxygen, no good DNA. Without good nutrients, no good DNA. You wouldn't have good cells, then you wouldn't have good tissues, good organs, or a good system. Why? DNA is composed of three main components. The, 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 the ladder, the uprights, they are made up of polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are carbohydrates. If we don't have the good carbohydrates, then we can't make a good, um, um, those verticals. The rungs of the ladder are made of polypeptides. They come from protein, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine in a particular sequence is going to determine the type of cell and the type of function. If we are not getting good protein, we can't make good ones of that. And the glue that holds it together are minerals. Do we not see now why many people are sick, even though they start treatment? Because now you have to rebuild the DNA. Because Satan knows that if the DNA is off, the cells are going to be off, the tissues are going to be off, the organs are going to be off, and the, we tend to do the result, which is the lump, the bump, the rust, the swelling, the pain, and the itching, and so on. That is the result. What we want to do is when we have those effects, go back and fix the DNA. Let's go back and review the ABC. A is to activate the cell, and to activate the cell, you need oxygen. B is to build the tissue. To build the tissues, we need nutrients. C is to cleanse the tissue from the waste that is pr produced as a result of metabolism. When we have that process occurring, we reduce inflammation. How do we do that? Well, with oxidative stress, we must have antioxidants. What are some of the main antioxidants that we know about? Of course, your beta carotene, your vitamin C, your vitamin A, Yes, your B vitamins, some of them perform, your choline. There are many um, uh, antioxidants. And you find a lot of them in our fruits and vegetables and so on. Uh, you need to have your enzymes functioning properly because they are going to influence, and your hormones, they are going to influence your thoughts. And if the thoughts are wrong, the feelings would be wrong. The thoughts and the feelings combined make up the moral character. Here is why many people are weak in mental and moral power. It occurs at the cellular level. What does the adversary want to do? Keep us in ignorance so that we don't understand these things. We don't take precaution. In the classroom, we are taught that bush doesn't taste good. And I tell folks, please don't call God's thing bush. No, a lot of what we call bush are medicine. And medicine is important because we are all sick. Sick because of sin. So when we are sick or to prevent sickness, we go and we take the herbs. God told us in Psalm 104 verse 14, he caused it the plants to grow for the, the grass to grow for the cattle and herbs for the service of man. Herbs are there to serve us, to serve us. Yesterday I was doing a session 
um, with the medical missionary movement, Caribbean chapter, we were talking about hormone imbalance. And there was a young lady who gave a testimony um, that I had worked with having done an evangelistic program in our sister island, Trinidad. And for months, she wasn't seeing her period. And um, the doctors didn't know what to do. And so I shared with her a couple of things. There is a plant that we have here called Wodelia trilobata. That's the Latin name. We know that plant is very powerful in regulating your estrogen level. And so I asked her to take that plant and um, to remove animal products from her diet, to put in the pumpkin seed and the sunflower seed and the flax seed and so on, and to use plant base. And the very next month she had a period. It came back without any pharmaceuticals. She said at that program, she was 200 and something pounds. She has lost 12 pounds and she's losing more. She says, I'm going to stay on the program. It is not costly and it is bearing the results. She's now happier. She has better in her relationship and God is actually working for her. I'm saying that we all can have those experiences we may not do it uh, necessarily on a large scale, but we can help our families. We can help our neighbors. And when we make them healthy and we let them know it's not anything of us, but it's God who made these things and gave us the knowledge. Would they not want to hear about Jesus too? I encourage us today, let us take the time to learn and to understand how things work. So when we evangelize, we can tell them that Jesus is the one who that inflammatory process represents. He is there to sequester, to bring together and to stop the hemorrhaging of sin because Satan has, has damaged us by sin and Jesus is the one who, who initiates that inflammatory process to prevent the hemorrhaging, the heat, the redness, the swelling and the pain of sin. I pray that God will be with us as we continue and may, may you be a light in this whole world of darkness. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Bob. That was awesome. That was uh, so informative I, and eye-opening indeed. I'm sure that people may be having questions and they would like to ask them. I hope you won't mind. Okay. Having a few questions. Let's can ask a couple of questions. Sure. Okay, sour, sour. Uh, so if you have a question kindly, you can um, put in the chat box or uh, you can unmute and ask. Okay, we can start with Agi. Okay, Hagi. Hagi is asking, do you have a regimen for primary and secondary dysmenorrhea? Say that again. <laughs> do you have a regimen for primary and secondary dysmenorrhea? Right. So those are the result of hormone imbalance. Right. Now, in many women especially, we have the, the, the foundation is laid for hormone imbalance in childhood because um, parents, especially mothers, have paved the foundation for this situation to occur by their lifestyle. And so they bequeath to the offspring um, the potential for hormone imbalance. Remember I spoke about that um, progesterone and estrogen situation and testosterone. What is happening because of the refined lifestyle, refined diet, um, lots of processed food, carbohydrates, um, um, unnatural fats and processed fats. These are the things that are contributing to high levels of estrogen or too low levels of estrogen. Um, and these are the things that are responsible. So some of the things we do for those things, um, black cohosh is a very powerful um, herb for this. Removal of refined foods, simply by removing refined foods. Um, we eat too much carbohydrates and they're fine type. So let's say if I ask a person to live off the wheat, 
Then we say, if you can use things like your quinoa and your amaranth, your kamut, these are things that are available that are much better spelt, much better to use. Then you use your pumpkin seed, your flax seed, and these things. There's something called um, fenugreek, um, sage. These are um, important plants that you can use to deal with, with those situations. For some, it may take a longer time. Now, some have conditions that cause them to leach, leach nutrients. So what we call the Anna's wild yam cream. Wild yam cream is a progesterone booster. That's one of the main hormones that a lot of women are deficient in why they have these problems. The progesterone level is too low. So they experience um, this dysmenorrhea and so on. So we can bring it back because like I said, this last lady, she was not seeing her period. There, there's one that reported yesterday, the period come twice a year. Yes, so they can be brought back by balancing the issues to balance the hormone. Now, different places may have different types of plants. What I suggest to people is that um, sometimes if they share the plants they have, we may be able to um, say one. But I know, for example, black cohosh is well known, well known for, for, for assisting with those problems. All right, yeah. Thank you very much. I think I, I, I gave I guess we were struggling to get the, the name of the first hub. Yes, the first one is Widelia trilobata. Widelia trilobata is um the, the is commonly known in, in our territory as wild marigold or um creeping daisy. Now it 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 grows in tropical countries all over the place at the side of the street. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a picture. I could send you a picture on my phone and you could share it with them. Um, but that, that plant is very, very powerful for, for dealing with hormone issues, especially um, the, the dysmenorrhea and so on. Let me see if I just find a picture here and I'll send it to you just about um, right away. So you can maybe forward it to them once you have um, their contact. I'm just looking at my cell phone here to see if I could find that picture so I can send it um, to, to you and you can send it off to them. Uh, yes, I have it here. So let me send it to you. Uh, right, so you should receive it in, in, in a bit and just let me know if you receive it. And uh, that plant is very powerful. I don't know if you have it where you are, but that's one of the plants we recommend for dysmenorrhea, amenorrhea, um, painful, if you have painful periods, your PMS, um, most times a lot of women are dehydrated, even increasing your water intake can assist with um, your, your, men, your menstrual issues. Um, a lot of women also are low in essential fatty acids. Um, doing your nuts and your seeds can assist with that. That's why we, we take the processed food out and we add, uh, the natural stuff in and we increase the fiber intake because remember waste removal if you if you have um your system blocked up you know congested you want to remove the waste to clear the way for that even people who can get pregnant there's another herb we have i don't know if you have it there it's called ruella tuberosa ruella tuberosa um also called mini root in our country that's powerful as a mucogenic to help eliminate the excess mucus so that it clears the way. Um, some people have endometriosis, where you have the lining is so thick and the old lining is no lining. All those things will assist with that, right? So um, that's the plant. Um, did you get the picture? Uh, yeah. Okay, I think I've not gotten it. Or you send it to you send it to Samuel or it to Gideon. I sent it, yeah, I sent it, yeah, I sent it out. So, um, the one who I just sent it to, I guess it's like, I, can't, I don't know if it's you I sent it to, um, but someone in the team, um, I sent it uh, to Yes, yes, I, I have gotten it, but then it, it's not clear, so maybe... Okay. Uh, let me see if I get another one to send Oh, it's it. okay, it's okay. You got, yeah, let me see if I get another picture that is much better um, to send it, because I, I think I may have another one um 
Uh, yes, I think this one may be better. All right, so this one is a lot larger. Um, you tell me if this one is clearer. I think so. The, the, the other option is maybe you can, can send the list of the names so that also we can look for them even from, from the internet. I think maybe if yeah. you have a list or um, maybe a document with the names, it will right. help so, so much. Uh, all right, so I, I'll WhatsApp. I'll WhatsApp the things that um, I have. I'll send it via WhatsApp so you can send it to the folks. Thank you very much uh, for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are the things you see, the, 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 the main issue is the inflammatory process getting out of hand because people are not um, careful enough to, to read when the body is starting to speak. So when we understand that now, we can have the appropriate intervention and bring healing to mind, body, and soul. Okay, someone is asking about uh, men hormonal issues and more so uh, when it comes to the issue of... Um, of importance. So is there, is there a remedy for that? All right, so there may be many causes and we always go back to the cause. Um, what is the cause? Um, impotence has a deep spiritual root. A lot of it sometimes come because of certain abuses in childhood, poor nutrition and lifestyle and definitely hormone imbalance. Men also have hormone imbalance and one of the, the symptoms of hormone imbalance is um, erectile dysfunction and impotence. So it's important for folks to put this in perspective. While, while women um, have issues with estrogen, men have issues with estrogen as well, for especially as they get older, the testosterone, what we call free testosterone, is converted to an estrogen-like testosterone called dihydrotestosterone. That testosterone is actually an estrogen-like, so it behaves like estrogen, it mimics estrogen, and that is why if you, if you have a low testosterone, then you are going to have erectile problems. Yeah, so now, one, some of the ways to improve is, um, one of the best ways to produce testosterone is to exercise. Exercise stimulates the production of testosterone. Drink adequate amounts of water. And then there are herbs like, um, like tribulus, uh, macuna puriens. Macuna puriens, we call it cow itch here. It's a, it, it grows like a, um, like a kind of like a tambran with lots of spines and it scratched like crazy. <laughs> but you can purchase it as a supplement. Um, you also have things like, you know, using ginger and um, maca. These things, these things are important for improving um, the testosterone level. Um, there is a product called His Synergy by a company called Metagenics, all herbal, that you can get. Improve your, um, your testosterone level and, and, and overcome that situation. It really balances out the hormone well. His Synergy by Metagenics. Yes, are there any other questions? Thank you very much. I don't I think there is any other. All right. Well, so great. It's always, so great. It is always great to to be of service. You know, thank you for for having give, afforded me the opportunity. And uh, may God continue to be with us as we seek to grow together in preparation for his coming. God bless you abundantly. It has been a great blessing for us. And uh, we thank uh Thank Dr. Ayodo for, for inviting you. We never knew you. But we've come to know it was a great blessing having you around. May God be with you. And uh, be sure that uh, maybe one of these fine days also we may invite you. So when you hear, you, when you hear our Mas Mas Macedonian call, calling yeah. you, kindly come and help us. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, my brother. It's always a pleasure to be here. And um, we have to, um, I, because of our time zone, I really like Aggie singing. Um, we shall have to ask her to come and sing for us in the Caribbean sometime. Yeah? It's okay, it's okay. I or hope she can, doesn't mind. If she, can reward, <laughs> if she can record it and send it, that would be great. If she can record Man. it and send it down, you know? Yes. All right, so great. You guys have a wonderful 
I guess it's night there, but it's just about, it is afternoon here. So have a wonderful afternoon. Sister Charmaine, I did see you, yes. Uh, God bless you, yes, may God keep you. Yeah, thank you all for, for having time and joining us for today's session. It has been a blessing. Don't forget, tomorrow we'll be having um, a panel discussion on um, drugs and uh, natural remedies. Same time, don't miss. And uh, just to remind us that as you all know, we are having a camp meeting starting on Sunday. If you've not registered, kindly hurry and do that and ensure that you are there for that camp. It will be an experience of its own kind. Uh, um, a live camp meeting in um in these in these times of of corona and after missing each other for seven months so ensure you you've registered the deadline for this is today so hurry and uh ensure that you are there for the camp meeting meet you tomorrow may god bless you and keep you you can share a prayer to finish our dear heavenly father thank you for your love thank you for your care thank you for being with us and our dear lord master we pray that you may continue keeping us and as we learn more may you help us dear master, to practice these things for we know it's only you who can work in us both will and prove your good pleasure. And will be done and forevermore in Jesus' name we do and believe. Amen. Amen.